The Assemblies of God is celebrating its 110th year of ministry and missional effectiveness. Wow, who could have ever imagined that from 300 people at that founding convention, that today, worldwide, the Assemblies of God is 85 million adherents and 444,000 churches. It is a miracle. And today on our 110th birthday, I wanna look back and talk about what makes us who we are and look at the momentum we're currently experiencing as well as take a look at how we prepare for the future. I'm delighted today to have some guests with me to help me unpack that, the past, the present, and the future. And uh, Brother Trask, I, you know, David said in Psalm 77, I will remember thy deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. Can we spend some time just reflecting on all that God has done through the assemblies of God? It's a phenomenal testimony to the goodness and to the grace of God. It's absolutely... No one could have ever imagined, couldn't have prophesied, I would think, yeah. <laughs> where we are today. But it's because of his favor That's it. and the work of the Holy Spirit. And it really, Brother Clay, what has set the assemblies of God apart from every denomination uh, that is non-Pentecostal uh, is our Pentecostal heritage, yes. the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right. And for us to be able to look back and see of the work of the Spirit and to know that He hasn't changed and He's at work today. And if Jesus tarries, the future is as yeah. bright as it can be. Yeah. And I also think when we look at our history, there have been seasons of revival. Yeah. Now, I, I want to say we're always in a season, but there have been unique times yeah. when there's been a move of God at I'm beginning to sense that even now. Many, yeah. many of our larger churches are having Sunday night revival meetings, Sunday night revival gatherings. And yep. how critical is revival to the Assemblies of God's vitality? Well, it's, it's the uh, key. Yeah. It really is. Because the church has to live in the life of the Spirit. Yeah. And the Spirit brings life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it brings life to the music. It brings life to the preaching. It brings life to the responding. And it brings life yeah. that focuses to a, that which God wants to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that the revival is not just age restricted. Yeah. John, I'm watching your generation yeah. really lean in to the things of the Spirit and the move of God. Is that an accurate perception? Absolutely. It's been so cool to see just a generation that is hungry for the presence of yeah. God. Yeah. The same spirit that was there 110 years ago yeah. is the same spirit that's carrying us through and yeah. is drawing individuals to ministry, drawing individuals unto himself. Praise and God. there is a absolute desperation yeah. for the presence of God. That's I think beautiful. that was reflected at our most recent Next Gen Conference yeah. that the, the altar time, that was like, that was like three nights yeah. of youth camp. Yeah, <laughs> there were yeah. three or four different <laughs> types of calls in each altar yeah. service and so, you know, I, I, I think that's so catalyst for yeah. us as a fellowship that the the work of the yeah. person of the Holy Spirit can textualize in where we're at yes. is uh, yeah. so important. You know, as it relates to present, we certainly want to build upon the foundation that's laid. We we What we celebrate, we don't measure ourselves against what's happened, mm. but we do measure ourselves by the unfinished task, by pushing forward yeah. with the momentum of the Holy Spirit to reach this generation and to realize that um, our generation just might complete the Great Commission. Yeah, yeah. But I pledge to you, and I know that the leadership in our fellowship feels this way, that as the Assemblies of God, we're going to remain Bible engaged, placing a high priority on the power of the Scripture, spirit empowerment, missions participation, and then, of course, what drives all of this is prayer. Yeah. I want to encourage you, if you haven't had a chance, to visit the World Prayer Center, where, where daily there are scores of people coming in there and 
praying over uh, the United States and, and other parts of the world. But, you know, Scripture is very clear. Some things only come but yeah. by prayer That's and right. fasting. Yeah. And I believe that we're experiencing the result of a previous generation's commitment to prayer and fasting. And, yeah. and I, too, and I look yeah. back over our history, Brother Travis, 110 years, there has not been a let up mm. on the value and the importance of prayer. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Uh, and you're right. It's through the power of prayer. Uh, if my people who are called by my name yeah. will humble themselves and pray. pray. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I will do. He, God will do. He'll, uh -huh. he'll respond yeah. if we'll pray. Yeah. It's work, but, <laughs> but it's, it's worth every moment we give. Yeah. You know, as we look to the future, John, you represent not only that generation, but you represent a ministry that's really important for perpetuating Pentecost, and it's the call, yeah. the calling. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, you know, the thing that I, that I say as it relates to those being called to ministry is travel the country and see the individuals that are responding to this yeah. call. Uh, the verse that just comes to mind time and time again is God is building his church yeah. and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Right. And we want a place for those individuals to feel like they're part of the family. What are we doing as a fellowship to gain, train and retain yeah. those called yeah. to vocational ministry? Yeah. I appreciate that. It, you know, something you just said, God is building his yeah. church. I get so frustrated at bloggers who aren't pastors yeah. that talk about the demise of the church. Yeah. <laughs> I can take you to churches week in and week out that are experiencing yeah. the move of God. And I haven't heard a trumpet blast yet. So that means the church is still <laughs> yeah. in business, yeah. still essential. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to thank you, John, as a younger generation, what do you think your generation is looking for in an yeah. assembly of God church? Yeah, I think the things that you've outlined, spirit empowered, you know, I think this generation is looking for biblical truth yeah. in a culture that is truth is relative yeah. and all over the place. I think there is a generation that's hungry yep. for someone who's willing to take a stand and say, this is what it looks like. This is what it is. And then that missional focus, yeah. you know, what are we doing to actually build the kingdom uh, here at home and then around the world? What am I a part of? What's that mission that I'm a part of that's bigger than myself? Well, Brother Trask, I want to thank you for the foundation that you laid that will bear the weight of the growth of future come generations yeah. to come. John, I want to thank you for embracing who we are as a Pentecostal fellowship and helping to perpetuate that. Yeah. And to those of you who are part of the Assemblies of God, oh, no doubt, the kingdom of God is a whole lot bigger than the Assemblies of God. But I am jealous for our slice of that kingdom pie for us to be as missionally fruitful as we possibly can be. You know, there are moments that last for seconds, and then there are moments that live on forever. I believe that today in the Assemblies of God, we're living in a forever moment. And the Assemblies of God is committed to taking all the gospel to all the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. So thank you for being a part of our God-ordained movement.